Hi everyone, my name is Kanye from Down the Garden Path with Kanye and welcome to our fast card making class. This is going to be a painting class so I hope you're ready with all your materials. Uh, check out our first post where I put down a list of stuff that you would need for this class. I'm hoping that you'll have fun, you'll enjoy yourself. Remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram on Down the Garden Path with Kanye. Now, if you're looking for, if you don't want to buy the materials yourself, which would be the cardstock, cut to size, um, I do have some sets available in Nairobi that you can actually buy. This is mostly for our Nairobi residents or Kenyan residents. Um, you can buy a set of, it's going to be enough material to do 10 cards. Um, you're going to have your cardstock cut to size, your layers cut to size, double-sided tape and some embellishments that you can use. Remember that this class is just a rough indication of what you can do. Do not feel compelled to do exactly what I do. Let your creativity loose and see what you create. And there are no wrong answers and there's no bad work. So just enjoy yourself, have fun, tell me how it goes. Post on Instagram some of the work that you've done. Enjoy! Hopefully at the end of this class, this is what you're going to have. Two cards that have a hand-painted detail and this is what they're going to look like. So let's go. We're going to start with our base board, which is a nice matte conqueror board that I really like to use. And I'm going to measure this. It is 21 by 14.5 centimeters, which is roughly an A5 size that we will fold. Our final card size will be A6. I use my creasing thingummy. Don't know whether it has another name, but I call it a creasing thingummy that I'll use to crease that line. You can use the edge of your ruler, you can use uh, the blunt side, the other side of your pencil, or even you can use an empty biro. The idea is to have a nice, clean, crisp edge that doesn't crack. Once I've done that, I will also pick up my blocks. My blocks are six centimeters by seven centimeters and then the smaller one is five millimeters smaller so that's um 5.5 by by 6.5 centimeters sorry about that and once i've made sure that that size is good i'd pre-cut my blocks already i will then now use my uhu to stick. I like Uhu because I can use it across different media. Uh, feel free to use your Prit stick or your, uh, your Prit liquid glue or any other liquid glue that you have that's appropriate for paper. Always remember not to put too much because then you don't want the paper shifting around when you glue it together. Then before I place it permanently, I like to just check that I have aligned them properly it's not always supposed to be perfect you'll not always get it perfect but just check with your eye measure with your eye now once that is done i will give it a moment so that it can dry nicely so that it's not moving around and it is now time for us to do our painting i like to use soft bristle brushes because i generally use watercolors or acrylics um, this is my Winsor Newton watercolor set. It's very, very well used. And I have my water there in an old teacup. And I'm going to use um, a scrap piece of paper just to check, just to check the result that I will get. Now, there's no, there's no set formula for doing a watercolor. So here I'm trying the wet on wet technique where is I wet the paper and drop the paint in uh, to see what that looks like. My idea was to have some flowers, some very loose type flowers. Now you can do whatever you want. So I'll probably try now doing a uh, where I just drop the paint directly onto the paper, which is what I'll be doing shortly. 
this one looks too washed out for me. I'm not I'm not loving it. So let me just try something else. Um, and this is where I put the paint directly on the paper. I think I like this better because it has a bit more definition. And then I clean out my brush and then use my now clean brush to just pull the paint a little to create the petals. I like this a lot better. I think it looks a lot better. So for your paints, you can use whichever watercolors that you have or acrylic colors. All of these are easily uh, readily available from most of our stationery shops like Textbook Center, Nairobi Art Evas. I'll have a link below where you can get all of these things from. Don't, so don't worry about that. I've used a total of three colors. That's I'm going to use. I've used the blue. I use obviously the green for foliage and I'll probably put a little spot of brown in the middle of the petals just to be in the middle of the to show the center of the flowers now I'm happy with that so now I'll go ahead and do it on my block my block is now nicely dry so I like to paint my things in trios so I'm gonna have a total of three flowers that I will put together so I put in the basic skeleton of the flower, which you can see is like a rough cross. And I will then clean out my brush and use and just kind of spread that color a little bit with a little bit of water to create the petals. The idea here is to have a very loose watercolor type feel. Now, at the time of doing this, I have no idea what the end product is going to look like. That's a great thing about watercolor that sometimes your result is very unexpected. It could come up better than you expected and sometimes it could be horrible, which is why we've got so much paper to work with. If it's horrible, we'll just do it again. I like these. So I'll go ahead and just complete them. I will add now the foliage just to give them some grounding. Remember, you can do anything you want on this little this little uh, block of yours. If you want to do an abstract, which is also really cool, because no one will question your abstract, you know, what was it supposed to be? It's an abstract, really. So just do what you feel like. You don't have to follow exactly what I have done. Okay? I happen to love flowers, so you'll notice in a lot of the things that I do, I will do a lot of flowers and I love working in watercolors just because of that unexpected outcome. So once I finish this, I will put it aside and let it dry. So for card number two, we'll do more or less the same thing that we did stick our block together and then we'll do a different colored flower for this one yeah um, again now that i'm a bit confident about the type of flowers that i'm doing though this one will have a slightly different form you'll notice i'm just doing some little globs of color of course there are going to be three of them um, and then i'll pull that with a cleaner brush with no color in it just so that you can have the light and the dark areas of the flower. We're not going to be very technical about having structurally correct flowers. These cards will already look fabulous just the way they are. And I'm going to go ahead and do the greenery for these ones. These are going to be very simple. Yeah. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to also just put it aside and let it dry. You never want to be uh, working with something that has wet paint because the chances of messing it are very very high so just give it those couple of minutes to dry now that our first one has dried i'm going to use my 3m double-sided tape i love this tape because it is spongy so it's not flat and i will use this to attach my first block to the main the base card the reason I like the 3M double-sided tape is because it gives me, you'll then find a little shadow between the block and the base card, which just adds further to the element of three-dimensionalness of your card if dimensionalness is a, is a word. I don't know whether that's a word. 
and I'm going to go ahead and peel this. 3M is fabulous because it's very easy to work with. Um, if you can't find that, that's okay. You can still use just glue and that's what I'll do with the other one so that you can see the difference. Yeah. Now, I use my fingers, if you'll notice, to just kind of place the, the, the block in the middle of the card. Once my eye is satisfied, that's when I glue it down. Yeah. And that's it. That card is actually complete as it is. And I'll just check just to make sure that the tape has, has uh, stuck properly. And there you get, that's what that looks like. You'll notice a little shadow around the edges, which is fantastic. Now for the second one, I want to show you the difference between using the 3M double-sided tape and just gluing. There's nothing wrong with just gluing it because I also know that sometimes finding double-sided tape is hard. We get some sometimes from, I think, um, Textbook Center had some, and you'll also find some in some of the hardware shops. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get a link for you on where you can get that. Now for this one, I'm actually going to just glue it. Again, you'll notice how I do the placement. Always make sure you're happy with the placement before you actually stick it down so you don't have to move it around. And there you go. This one is flat against the paper, still looks fabulous. And there you have it. Your two cards, fantastic. You can send these to anyone. They're very professionally done. Um, one of the things I forgot to tell you is when you're starting this work, please make sure you have clean hands. The cleaner your raw material is, the better you are. I hope you enjoyed that class. Please let me know what you think. Your, share with me what you've done. Ask me any questions that you have. Give me any uh, feedback that you have so we can make this class better for you. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.